Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I'm on a street in Manchester. I'm just here to show you some pretty good failures of an asphalt surface course. You'll have to excuse the traffic because it's not going to stop. And I'm on the footway, so I consider myself fairly safe. You can see here in front of us, we've got a surface course, which is about 25 to 40 millimeters thick. And we've got some kind of a binder or a previous surface course, which is potentially the same thickness. And then below you've got some kind of a, no, 40 mil stone, something around that size. Oh yes. Cars just keep driving through it because these are in the wheel tracks, bizarrely, even though it's not quite on this side of the white line there. And you can see over here on the where cars park at night time, you've got a lot of gravel. So what's going on here is that this is some kind of a thin surface course, some kind of a stone mastic asphalt type surface course that's failed. And the failure mechanism for that surface course is a complete breakdown. So one stone comes out, and you can see it happening all along here. One stone comes out, and then every stone adjacent to that stone comes out, and it just follows on and just collapses until you get this kind of thing. And once one stone's come out, you might get a bit of water in, and then you'll get some kind of pumping action of compression of the water, which blows the other stones out. The same with frost. So it's quite clear here. You've got two sets, two lines. So this road is probably paved in three rips of asphalt and it's failing along the joint and it's failing pretty badly but what's good about this bit of road here is that we can see just where these bicycles are now there's been some Bye. patching <laughs> there's been some patching to the road and so the patches go in and stop up the problem for a while there's a bit more just over there but everything adjacent to the patches fails because either you cut out a square for the patch or you patch just into the hole but everything around it has already been weakened or through the action of cutting it with a saw it further weakens it so you end up with this road that ends up like a patchwork quilt very poor ride quality and we'll just go down here and have a closer look so a little bit further down the road you wind up with this multiple patching effect you've got a big inlay there smaller patches bits just dropped in out of a bucket perhaps or with a shovel so no treatment of the edges and you can see the edges are just collapsing and it's in the wheel path so it's getting a lot of hard abuse further down here you've got some kind of matrix cracking which indicates that what's underneath has failed so the, those one inch stones that we saw below are 40 mil size stones that were below have all become loose and so once you put in a patch in just the surface course this patch then will start to fail as we can see down here and so down here further down the road again you've got an inlaid patch but it's probably only inlaid in the surface course so up here is what was adjacent to it and this will have failed probably since this has gone in <laughs> and it's failed pretty spectacularly as well but it's failed in a map matrix or a alligator type cracking so it's lots of little squares and that it, you can see a pattern here before these stones chip out and the whole thing fails what's happening here is that the subgrade or the, the, the road underneath is failing and it's become extra flexible and so even if you dig out what's on top and put in a new bit, it'll just crack in the same way because the cracks are coming up through it. And then you'll put in a little patch here and a little patch there. And the reason why this is accentuated in this location is because we've got a pedestrian crossing island. So the traffic is forced into a very tight channel. And again, we can see all of the chippings that have come off the road here. And of course, they'll damage the cars that are parked adjacent to the road as they come off. So what's the solution here? Well, in reality, if you've got this kind of failure mechanism, you have to dig down deep enough to treat what's underneath, and that costs money. Whereas if you just put in an inlaid patch like this one here, or this big one here, it hides the problem for a short period of time. Neighbors and presumably the council who the work has been conducted on behalf of are satisfied that it's been repaired. And then it just propagates further up the road and then back into the patch itself. So you don't really solve anything. So yeah, the solution is to completely dig it out. Other solution, of course, is to put on a full overlay. So another maybe 100 or 150 millimeters of asphalt. So you're basically building a new road on top. And that works fine, except here, we've probably only got about 75 millimeters, maybe 100 millimeters at the curb edge. So to rise it up, to rise the whole carriageway surface up that high, 
uh, would mean you'd have to raise all of the gully pots, manhole covers and adjacent street furniture and footways up higher. And of course that doesn't work when you've got neighbouring houses nearby as well. So it's a difficult one for a local authority to deal with, but really treatment is not just to put in these little patches and then wait for everything around them to go and then dig it all out and put in a bigger patch. It just doesn't solve the problem. But it does make some nice sounds on a video.